Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and today we're going to be taking a look at the best American-made combat knives that you can get right now in 2020. Let's check them out. So it's always a good time, but now especially so, to buy American. And we've got some great American combat knives to take a look at now. Now first, before we get into it too deeply, I want to have a word about what constitutes a combat knife versus a tactical knife. Now in my mind, there's definitely a distinction. Each seems to carry different connotations. Now in my mind, tactical seems to encompass more things like law enforcement, special operations, SWAT teams, that sort of thing. Whereas combat to me connotes battlefield use. It's much more military and soldier focused. Now there's definitely some overlap between the two, but it's sort of like all combat knives are tactical knives, but not all tactical knives are combat knives. Things aren't always clear cut and it is hard to truly pin down. And as you can see from my physique, I've never actually seen combat, but I do know a good knife when I see one. We're gonna start with probably the most famous combat knife in all the world. It's an American icon, the K-Bar USMC Fighter, which starts at just 85 bucks. Now this design is also called the Mark II Fighting Knife. In fact, that was its name when this design was adopted and produced by many companies during World War II. But K-Bar, of course, is most heavily associated with this design. It's been popular ever since as a knife that could handle combat as well as day-to-day -day utility needs of our nation's service members. It's basically an evolution of the contemporary hunting knives at the time. The modern day version of this knife features a seven inch clip point blade. It's made from 1095 CV carbon steel with a black coating. Now that black coating is something you'll see a lot on combat knives because for one thing, it helps to minimize reflections. Although in the case of this knife in particular, it also protects the carbon steel underneath from rusting. We've got a saber grind on this knife with flat bevels and an upswept clip point shape with a broad switch. Now this feature here is called a fuller. This is not a blood groove as you'll hear some people refer to it as. It's designed to take a little bit of weight out of the blade as well as to help with lateral strength. You can kind of think of it like an I-beam. It's got nothing to do with, uh, with liquid flowing through there. And then the handle itself is a nice oval cross section. It fills the hand and indexes very nicely. Now this stacked leather, of course, is the classic option. Sometimes they can be really smooth, but they've put a series of deep grooves around it so you can still get plenty of positive retention in the hand. Now, unlike a lot of more modern combat knives, this is not a full tang design, but it does have a full length reduced tang going all the way to the back. Also in contrast to a lot of more modern designs, the sheath on the K-Bar is about as classic as they come. It's just a simple leather drop sheath with a snap retention loop at the top for the handle. This knife is still issued to troops to this day, and it's definitely worth having in any knife collection out there, and it's still a great place to start if you're just getting into combat knives. Now when I say this knife is probably the most famous combat knife in the world, as you're about to see, the DNA of this knife is highly influential across the entire combat knife genre. It's really baked into a lot of different options out there, and I'm going to show you a few alternatives to this one right now. For a slightly more affordable option, you can check out this knife right here. It's the SP-1 Marine Combat, which is part of Ontario Knife Company's Spec Plus series, which is a great budget-friendly line of blades still made in the USA. This version I'm holding right here comes in about $47, coming in right under that $50 price point, which is a great place to be. It still features 1095 carbon steel, but they've also sharpened the back end of the swedge on this particular one, so it's gonna penetrate even better, as well, of course, as working on the backstroke. Now the handles are nice, grippy craton, and they're molded over the tang itself. So that's definitely a bit of a more affordable way of doing things, which lets them get the price down. And the sheath itself is also fairly simple. Again, you're gonna make a few compromises for this type of product at that price point if you want American-made quality, and it's still gonna be a highly functional piece. Now, Ontario also does a higher end take on the Mark II, but it's still not terribly priced either. They call this the Chimera, and it comes in only about 120 bucks. Got an eight and a quarter inch blade of phosphate coated 1095, and this knife is a beast. We've got a long straight clip point here. Nice acute tip, a bit more acute in fact, I think, than the K-Bar. Not sharpened up here though, but we do get some very broad serrations at the base. We've got a craton handle again that mimics the shape of the stacked leather of old and a really aggressive bashing pommel here at the end. Now the sheath itself is plastic, but it actually calls to mind some of the old fiberglass or bakelite sheaths that were used in the World War II era. 
I've actually got an old Camillus Mark II from late 44 to mid 45, and you can definitely see the family resemblance here. There's some Molly compatible strapping on the back of this, which of course the old one wouldn't have had. And we've also got a nice ceramic rod here in the sheath to help keep your edge in tip top shape. And it's even gonna help with those serrations. Now you can even see that Mark II influence on knives with more modern styles of construction, including this half breed large infantry knife. In fact, you take a look at those two blades side by side, and that's about as close as you can get without going for the original. You've got a full tang D2 blade here. The blade itself has a bit of a broader swedge. Again, something else that reminds me of my old, uh, my old Camillus Mark II. We've got some partial serrations here, as well as a very subtle fuller. Now the guard on this knife is a little bit more subtle on the back side, which is gonna make certain grips a little bit easier if you need to choke up on the spine of the knife just a little bit. Rather than craton or stacked leather handles, we've got G10 bolted onto the scales. Again, a very modern way of doing things. And instead of a butt cap, you get a protruding tang here at the back, and it comes down to an apex to concentrate your force on when you want to use it for smashing. The sheath itself is also more modern, clicks in with positive retention, and it even comes with a large tech lock on the back so that you can carry this all kinds of different ways. Now, even when the direct influence is a little more hidden, the USMC fighter still throws its weight around, like you see in this knife, the Becker BK-7. Now, in conversations I've had with Ethan Becker, he told me that this knife actually arose from a conversation about how he would go about redesigning the classic Mark II, and the BK-7 is what he came up with. Now, despite being a little bit larger overall, the weight is pretty much the same, because of course, a soldier is gonna be very conscious about the amount of gear they are carrying since they have to schlep it around so much. Shape itself ventures further from the archetype, but you still get that seven inch clip point blade and a guard at the back, at least for the index fingers. The handles are also bolted on. They're synthetic, contoured very nicely. And back to the blade itself, it's also 1095 CV. Because in a twist of fate, even though this was designed when the Beckers were being made by Camillus, the modern BK7s are also made by Cable. Now the sheath on the Becker is a little more plain. It's just a simple nylon piece. We do have Molly compatible webbing on the back, as well as a Velcro and snap attached belt loop here at the top. It features a hard plastic insert on the front with a nice loop for the handle, as well as a Velcro pouch at the front for stashing some extra gear. All right, sticking with some more modern overbuilt stuff, we're gonna start seeing some things that stray a little bit further away from the USMC fighter formula. This first one is from Spartan Knives, which is a veteran owned and operated company. This is the Defensa. Now, this was designed by Bill Harsey, who actually famously co-designed the Chris Reeve Green Beret, which is another great combat knife, but I don't have one to show you today because they've been getting really hard to get a hold of lately. Now, Spartan, of course, is a smaller, more boutique company than the big K-Bars of the world, and as such, the price is going to be a little higher here. This one comes in at about $425 right now. Now, the blade, this is actually the first knife that's not a clip point that we've seen so far. We've got a very versatile drop point shape. In addition to combat, it's gonna be nice and strong and pointy enough for those roles, but I think it'd be great in the outdoors as well. I would not hesitate at all to take this knife camping. Blade itself is a bit over six inches long and we've got S35 VN steel, definitely premium stuff. We've got an FDE coating as well. And there's a few different colors available. It's got a flat grind for versatility and a nice choil here for choking up. This definitely provides better fine control than some of the other knives we've looked at so far. Taking a look at the handle itself, you can definitely tell right away that it's a Bill Harsey design. It's got a very signature looking shape. They're made from micarta and it grips and orients very well. Like the Becker we just looked at, we've still got a substantial guard here on the front side, whereas the back is a little more neutral. Got a nice wide thumb ramp here with some deep jimping that's gonna work well even if you're wearing combat gloves. Now the sheath for the Spartan is actually kind of similar to the Becker as well. It's nylon, but we've got Molly compatible stuff here on the front rather than a pouch. So you can attach any of your other Molly compatible gear there instead. On the back, we've also got Molly webbing as well as a bunch of paracord, as well as a Velcro loop here at the front for taking on and off your belt. All right, next up, we've got the Benchmade Arvensis, which is a Shane Siebert design coming in at 238 right now. Blade's about six and a half inches long. We've got 154 cm steel, which is a solid choice, and it's certainly thick enough to be quite durable. Similar to that Chimera from before, we've got a long, straight clip point profile. This knife has a black finish, and the main bevels are flat ground, and it's even got some partial serrations here at the back edge, but a satin-finished plain edge variant is also available if you prefer that type of profile. 
Again, with this design, we've got a nice choil for choking up, and they up the fine control even further by adding a pair of thumb scallops here that allow for a very nice pinch grip. Although I will say that when it comes to that Harsey, even though you don't have thumb scallops, because of the design here at the front, it also does a pinch grip very well. Back to the Benchmade though, you can see we're back to dual guards, but they are kept fairly small. You're not gonna have too big of a problem choking up over the back if you need to. Now the G10 handles may seem a little squared off, but they're actually quite comfortable, I've found. And you've even got a set of flared tubes going through it, which is gonna give you a few different lashing options. You've also got a protruding tang at the back, but rather than coming to a point, that's sort of a tread pattern here that's gonna work well for bashing. Now as far as the sheath, it does click in with positive retention, but you do have an extra snap strap there just in case. Now the sheath does come with its own belt attachment hardware in the box, but thanks to these slots next to the rivets, you should be able to also use the popular tech lock hardware. All right, one more premium big option, the RMJ Tactical Jungle Combat, which comes in about 395. Now, like the Mark II, the USMC fighter, we do also have a seven inch blade here, but this knife feels a bit more like a big buoy knife rather than the hunting heritage of the USMC design. Of course, you could make the argument that a buoy is nothing but another type of big hunting knife, and we're gonna avoid that for now. The way they sit today, they certainly have a different character. We've got Nitro V steel here, which like the last two knives we looked at is a stainless option, but it's still nice and tough. Like the last two knives, this is also coated. We've got a tungsten Cerakote finish, but of course, since it's a stainless, that's not for corrosion resistance. That's just to bring the reflections down. We've also got a signature RMJ element, these subtle milling lines on the main grinds. You can certainly see them, but you can't really feel them too much. They're not gonna really introduce too much drag at all. The handles, we've got flared tubes again on this one, but Coyote Brown G10 on this particular one, but there are a few different options. I think the handle actually works very well the way they've designed it. It's got a neutral shape, but it flares towards the back a little bit. And that allows you to get some pretty good retention if you want to use this knife for some light chopping. We've also got a dual guard, again, slightly shorter at the top. But the choil on the front of this one is a little short for my fingers. You can kind of get in front of there on the guard if you need to pull this out, which is actually the way most uh, old school buoys were made. But this is not quite as good for choking up for fine control unless you have really small fingers. The sheath is Kydex, snaps right in quite well. It does come with its own hardware, but these holes will fit a tech lock. But one of the nice things here, you can see on the back, these straps here are Molly compatible and they come with what's called a pull the dot snap. What that means is that these are only gonna unsnap in one direction and that's straight up. If you're pulling from the side, these aren't gonna come loose on. All right, even though that seven inch blade length is proven and popular, not all combat knives have to be quite that large. A lot of modern combat knives do come in a smaller size. Perhaps one of the most famous of those is the Gerber LMF2. Now this was originally designed as a pilot survival knife, and that sub five inch length that you see here, it's gonna be easier to control in cramped spaces and just as easier to control in general. This is actually available in a couple of different versions. For about 150, you can get the whole ASEC package, which is air crew survival egress knife. That version comes with a full featured sheath that even has a pull through sharpener in it, as well as an extra strap cutter that can be used as a gut hook, as well as some other survival applications. But if you don't want some of the extra gubbins, you can spend less than 100 bucks for just the knife and a sheath. The blade itself is 420HC stainless, a drop point shape with a nice swedge to keep the point a little more acute. Partial serrations are also great for those rescue type of needs that a pilot survival knife might be pressed into service with. You can cut through strapping a little bit better if you don't have that extra knife with you. Now the handle is rubberized and nice and grippy. At the back you can see we have an apexed pommel as well, which is gonna be great as a glass breaker for those escape needs, as well as the more combat oriented tactics you might use with it. Now one of the neat features with this handle, in addition to just it being quite comfortable, is the butt cap and the tang of the knife are actually separate elements. And they do this for two reasons. One, it's gonna to help to absorb shock from hammering on this knife if you really need to beat on things, but also, the shock that you might get from electricity. That's something that's especially gonna be useful. Again, original mission was pilot's escape and survival tool. If you're needing to cut out of your cockpit somehow, there's certainly gonna be electricity running around you, but it's also gonna work weight for demolition crews and the like. Now, as the LMF2 is a quote unquote survival knife, you do see some holes here that you can use for lashing this to a stick to be used as a spear. Now, I'm not always the biggest fan of recommending this as a technique, but for pilots who have had to eject, 
There certainly is a chance that their gear might get trapped up out of reach in a tree, in which case strapping this to a stick could allow you to reach that and get your gear back on your side. Now, if you want a similar vibe to the Mark II, but you want a plain edge without the serrations, you should check out the Strong Arm. It's got similar specs, US made, 420HC blade, nearly identical in shape, but it is a little bit smaller. This guy comes in at 70 bucks. It also comes with a nice sheath that is ambidextrous, so you can use it on either side. We've also got an apexed tang at the back, but this is a full tang knife. It's not electrically insulated, so just keep that in mind with your needs before you purchase this one. All right, now let's look at a more premium smaller option, the Hogue EXF01, which was designed by Alan Elishowitz, coming in just over 200. This knife has a crazy tough blade. It's almost a quarter inch thick, made from A2 tool steel with a gun coat finish. It's about five and a half inches long, although there is also a seven inch version available. Now to me, this knife actually has a similar vibe as the LMF2 from earlier, but I think it's a sexier shape overall. It's got that shorter, more controllable blade, but it is a nice shape for all around use. Got a flat grind with a nice swedge for a little more efficient cutting for things that are back here on this side of the blade. And it doesn't have a choil, but it does have a wide enough ricasso that you can choke up for finer work. Like the LMF2, we've got a few different holes for your lashing needs, as well as a protruding tang at the back for smashing. But again, this is not an insulated handle like the LMF2. Instead, this is very nicely contoured G10. This particular pattern is called G-Mascus. They are bolt-on, as you can see, and this knife even comes with its very own Torx wrench right there embedded in the handle if you need to do any adjustments. As far as the sheath goes, it's kind of similar to the Becker and the, uh, the Spartan we looked at from earlier. It's got some molly webbing on the front as well as the back, and the belt attachments up here are molly compatible and they feature a set of three snaps. This Hogue is definitely a premium option, and I've gotta say they've got a phenomenal factory edge. Just about like every Hogue I've ever handled, they're at the top of their game in the sharpening department. It's highly refined and razor sharp. All right, we haven't actually talked about daggers much yet, and they certainly have got a place in history, and the Fairbairn Sykes is perhaps the most influential today, but we don't have any that are made in America nowadays. This, however, is the Gerber Mark II, which is heavily influenced by the Fairbairn Sykes. This is certainly a very famous design. This was carried through at least Vietnam by our troops. You can see it in a lot of movies over the years as well. This was actually used by Mel Gibson in the Road Warrior film. But in fact, I've even heard it said that this knife is second in renown only to the K-Bar itself in terms of American-made combat knives. For all that, it's not too bad a price though either. It comes in just under 100 bucks right now. Got almost seven inches of steel, 420 HC blade, double-edged with serrations on each side. You've got double upturned guards for protection. And you're not really going to have to worry too much about choking up past those because it's not really something you want to do on a double-edged blade anyway. We've got a wasp waisted handle of cast aluminum. Definitely fits into the hand very nicely. Sheath itself is fairly simple. You've got a retaining strap and this is reversible to either side. So this is an ambidextrous sheath. You've got a little bit of molly strapping on the back as well as your belt loop. But the Mark II is certainly a solid knife, but it is pure combat. Definitely fewer crossover uses than the other knives we've seen so far, built for maximum penetration. All right, next we've got another K-Bar, because the USMC Fighter is not the only famous fighting knife in their roster. This is the Ek Model 4, coming in at 105 right now. Now, it was only a couple of years ago, in fact, that K-Bar acquired the Ek Commando Knife Company, and with it, their aggressive blades that have been in service since 1941 with Special Forces all the way through to the modern battlefield today. Again, being a K-Bar combat knife, we see a 1095 CV carbon blade with a black finish, about six and a half inches, double-edged with a nice S-guard and a full tang construction. We've got GFN handles in this case, which are actually held on with traditional X-head fasteners rather than more modern stuff. In that way, these are gonna be very field expedient to adjust. Now the tang actually extends beyond the end of the handles just a little bit. You can use that as a pry bar or for opening things like ammunition crates. It also protects the scales when you're using it as a thumper and can even be used as an additional point for an offensive strike. The sheath itself, I think is pretty clever on these. It slides in. And the positive retention is actually provided by a few plastic tabs that are integrated onto the belt loop itself. When you go to draw, you simply push that back to release and you're able to take it out no problem, but it's not gonna fall out on you unless you truly wanna bring it out of the sheath. 
Now you can also get the Model 4 in a luxed up presentation grade version with walnut handles and polished 440C steel, or as the Model 5 version which comes with a clip point buoy blade for a little bit more versatility. So that's it for our list of the top American made combat knives that you can get your hands on right now. Be sure to let us know your favorite combat knife down in the comments and to get your hands on one of these cool knives, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. And make sure you've signed up for our knife rewards program while you're there, because if you're gonna buy one of these cool knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. I hope you're all staying safe, sane, and sanitary out there. See you next time.